let's start talking about multi-tiered architectures. And this is the last name, part of a name of our class. And, and so we wanna talk about what that means. When the web was first being developed, there was a, a style of computing called client server. And a lot of, of the web uh, grew up with this kind of mentality. And basically what that means is you've got some computer, we'll call a client, that makes requests to another computer, which is a server, which will do all the, the hard work. And then when the server is done with its hard work, it will return some result. This should look a lot like what we think of the web, where this is our web browser, and this is our web server, and we have an HTTP request and the HTTP response from it. And the uh, initial design for a client server was that the clients were very underpowered. We couldn't afford powerful computers for everyone. We had to have cheap, inexpensive, sometimes even what were called dumb terminals that uh, were over here. And so they couldn't do a lot of work. And so whenever something important had to happen, we had to ship that request over to the server. And the server, the expensive server, the one that we could only afford one of for sharing for a lot of people, would do the heavy lifting. And then it would return its results back to the client, which then could do things like display the results and. Um, interact with the user in case they were typing on the keyboard or using the mouse and, and so forth. And so the client could take care of all that simple stuff, but the server had to do all of the heavy work. And, and that was the context within w which the web server, uh, client server uh, style was, was developed. And you can see that in, in our HTTP model. Now, with a multi-tiered application, what we end up doing is we kind of add one little um, detail here, and that is that we're gonna add in here, uh, let's say, some sort of a database. And this can be either, um, I'm gonna put a, a separation between the server and the database here, this can be either a, a logical or a physical separation. In other words, it is possible, and with the, the simple Rails apps that we're working on right now, it is possible in, in a logical separation that the server and the database are on the same machine but we don't think of it that way because the the server responds to the request from the client and then it forwards on those requests to the the database and the database does the heavy lifting when it comes to data manipulation and calculation and and sorting ordering filtering wh whatever the case m may be but it is also true that the, there could be actually a physical separation. And in this case, the server and the database are on separate machines. And in, in that case, it's going to look very similar. The server is going to send a request now to the machine where the, the database resides and it's going to kind of act like a server for this server. Um, but the, the, the key is that we have separated out uh, the response to the, the web requests from the data accesses. And so if we, we think about these, these in a tiered manner, we have our what might be called presentation logic at one tier. In other words, the client or the web browser is, is doing everything about how to, 
display and present the information as well as interact directly with the, the user. We have our second layer here which is sometimes called the application uh, or it might be called the business logic and this is the second tier and this encodes all the rules about our application. This is what our application is trying to do, this is how it works, this is what is allowed, this is what is not allowed and then we have our actual data layer or data logic here. And these are three different tiers within which we activate it. You, you might, uh, with a Rails, um, think of, of this being our controller uh, a little bit, and this as being our, our view, and this as being our model. Uh, there's, th this isn't a perfect analogy because uh, most people will say uh, thin controller and thick model. In other words, they want to move business logic into the models so that our controls are, are almost um, boilerplate. They look very similar from one controller to, to the next. Uh, and you can think about an example of this when we do validations. The validations show up in our models where we say our user model has to have uh, a legal unique username or our uh, services have to be connected with a church and can't stand alone on their own and so forth. And, and so these are the, the tiers um, that we use with a web framework.